Victims Commissioner Baroness Helen Newlove says she's inundated with stories from victims of antisocial behaviour. She says the Victims and Prisoners Bill is a golden opportunity to fix the problem, but instead the bill, which is currently being debated in the Lords um, in the coming days, currently overlooks victims of persistent antisocial behaviour. Yes, and um, we were inundated as well with your stories as viewers of this particular antisocial behaviour. Going to put some of those points to Baroness Newlove, whose husband Gary was murdered outside their home by three teenagers 17 years ago. And before that attack, the family had experienced ongoing abuse and intimidation in their community. And Baroness Newlove joins us now. You know the hell of this sort of antisocial behaviour culminated in the mm. loss of your husband. But it begins in a much lower level way, doesn't it? And sometimes in a way that seems to be dismissed or isn't taken seriously. And from the experiences of our viewers, they just can't guess it. Taken seriously by police, by local authorities, and in some cases are, are complaining about harassment for a very long time until it gets to the devastating consequences mm. that you experience. Yeah, I think... Um... The two words, because that's where we start from, low level, it isn't low level. I think we need to eradicate that from the narrative right. um, because the impact on the individual is immense. Mm. Um, we did suffer antisocial behaviour in 2007 um, and my inbox is full of absolutely people. But yes, it is the police pass it off as a misdemeanour. We've got the housing who then do not do enough to, to protect the victims. And the Victims and Prisoners Bill that's going through the House of Lords is to ensure that we get victims of persistent antisocial behaviour, get the same support um, as any other victims that are defined within the Criminal Act. It's such a good point you make about the perception of these events as low level. Because I use that phrase, because that's a common yeah. perception. Someone throws litter on your front garden or someone shouts at you outside your mm. home, perhaps a neighbour, or someone keeps you up late because th there's deliberate noise next door. But even one of those events can leave you feeling disempowered, intimidated Definitely. and fearful that things are going to get worse. Yeah, because if you're living in constantly with that and you see the temptation, what's going outside to torment you, it is like a, a chronic illness, an invisible chronic illness. And the fact is that um, at the moment, as Victims Commissioner, we're doing a survey on antisocial behaviour, we've already got 600 people, which is the biggest one on one single area of crime uh, and shows you how it is affecting across the country. And... You know, for me, it is about understanding answers. I will never give up because we go on about, you know, we speak about Gary's murder, mm. but the, the, you know, the build-up was antisocial behaviour. Tell us what happened. Um, what was the build-up? The, the antisocial behaviour was really rife at that time and there was people littering, which, again, people think, oh, it's just littering, but it's not when it's constant. It's like a dripping tap. The people were just destroying our cars and the police were not coming out and doing anything. And when we had community meetings where... Again, it's down to individuals in the neighbourhood um, had had enough. Um, you know, we really said that I said to my neighbour that nothing will happen until somebody loses their life. Little did I know it'd be Gary. But the impact of antisocial behaviour is the build-up. But we talk about, yes, quite rightly, the loss of his life and what my daughters went through and what I went through. But the fact is, if we don't recognise that root cause of what happens, it escalates. And so for when victims want that support, when they phone the, the police, when they look, go to the local agencies, they expect to get some service back from them, advice, support. And, you know, the police are not doing that. It's a misdemeanour to them or they pass it over to the housing. And it's, it's not just about legislation, it's fully understanding the impact, which, yeah. you know, we go back to Fiona Pilkington days, you know, and David Askew days, where they don't feel listened to. Mm. And it's a constant, constant, and it affects their mental health, their physical health, they lose their jobs, they lose, break up relationships. And sadly, Susan, Susanna, they, they actually, the victims move away yes. because they don't deal with the people. Mm. And the level of violence that's delivered now is absolutely immense, you know, and this isn't young people with just in gangs. This is adults doing this to adults. So we've really got to look at society as a whole, as well as blaming the police. Is mm. This is not appropriate mm. to do. In the bill, um, you are 
trying to get an amendment through to strengthen the, the rights um, for, for victims. And I think it, it, um, it almost got through in the laws last night, but just failed. Yeah. What would that amendment actually do? How would it practically change things? It would... Well, it's actually come on the back of a recommendation on my last re final report when I left uh, Victims Commission role in 2019, was the fact that I wanted a recommendation where we would look at the Victims Code of Practice and define antisocial behaviour, persistent victims of antisocial behaviour, um, to be recognised to get the support services, because if they meet that threshold, mm -hmm. they should get the support services. Right. And actually, it would help people to understand they are being listen to they don't feel alone um, and the level of violence as I say um, they become they feel that they're the nuisance when they report it instead of the other way around what's the argument against doing that well, the, the, the government... Um, of, this was a Labour amendment, but the government really have decided that, you know, it is a crime, whatever, because even if you do one occasion, if it's harassment, we have that in law. But the fact is they're not getting the support because the police are the ones who recognise mm. and, and say there's a threshold there. Mm. So there is another bill, as you will know, with legislation in your back with your experience. Um, so I can have another bite of the cherry on that. Can I ask one other question? Um, the... Uh, obviously, the right of the victim to get help is important. Very much But what so. I also hear is that these days, um, the police feel that they don't have the powers to, to act against the person who is perpetrating the antisocial behaviour. That in the past, um, if somebody uh, ignored a police um, a civil order, then that was a criminal offence and it lo no longer is and therefore it's ended up with the police and local authorities thinking we haven't really got the powers to act and therefore they're not. Is there something to be said for strengthening the law to give the police and local authorities more power to act on behalf of victims? Well, I disagree with that because I think the police have got many powers. You know, we were talking when we lost Gary in 2007, there was plenty of powers then and they didn't do anything for antisocial mm. behaviour. It's not about the powers as be and you can't have that as a default button. It's about duty of care and it's about supporting people when they phone up for help. Where are they to turn to? And again, you know, we're in a digital world. You're asking them to investigate their own crime that's against them. I want to read to you some of the experiences of our viewers. Um, because when we asked yesterday, because you were in the Daily Mirror and there was a case of one individual who'd reported 280 mm. individual instances of antisocial behaviour, but it wasn't until they came under attack yeah. that it was taken seriously. One, one viewer wrote in and says, the area I live in used to be lovely for the past decade. Last few months have been thefts of cars by rowdy kids and this viewer's car was stolen. But police just closed the case with no investigation or CCTV checks done. So this person just feels like the justice mm. hasn't been done and this group of kids is still yeah. around knowing they can get away with it. Yeah. Got a viewer who says, I'm disabled, I've been suffering antisocial behaviour for more than four months. Police have given me warnings not to approach my neighbours when they're waking me up from 11 at night until six in the morning, banging on my bedroom wall and nothing is being done. I had a stroke in 2014. My stress levels and anxiety have gone through the roof. I can't get any help. And another viewer, my 24-year-old daughter and I have been living in fear for the past few years, living upstairs in our house. Our direct neighbours threatened to pour petrol through our letterbox. One of their friends a few doors away is often screaming and shouting that he's going to shoot everyone. We can't report anything because when we did report an incident to the council, they did nothing to help and told me to write everything down. What do you, what would you say to all of these people? Because they see you on television, you're the spokesperson <laughs> now, aren't you? Because they're not getting any support from their council no. or the police. No, and, and this is what I get with emails and yes. everything. And the, and the level of violence that you're reading out there is unacceptable. And for me, it's about the police doing something, about really having an action and understanding. Um, you know, with cars, they just see it as an item, which we had criminal damage to our cars. It was like, well, just get a criminal record reference for your insurance that's not the way about it um, but the fact is that the level that people are going through and left in silence you know you can't wait till the horse is bolted till another 
Gary mm. or uh, Fiona. It's mm. just not acceptable. And for me, they need that support. And it's too easy to pass the book. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what, if you know, they can write to me. But you shouldn't have to write in and say nobody's listening because. So the police should be there. The police should be there. And the police are not, you know, I've had recent cases on other, uh, other incidents, um, you know, and they're not coming out. They'll, yeah. they'll say to the victims, we're under resourced or we haven't got enough forensics. That's not a victim's issue. That's for them to deal with. Yes. And actually, in 2007, we had plenty of police officers. You can flood it with police officers, but they haven't, if they're not there to listen, give you the time. Time, understand the intelligence, work with the communities. Mm. It's not worth the paper that is written on for them individuals. So you want the Victims Code to include a provision that if you suffer three incidents yes. of antisocial behaviour, you will be given yes. support and advice yeah. and a plan of action. Yes, that gives a mechanism for the police to actually join the dots because they don't, they deal with it in isolation. I want them to deal it with the first one, um, but they don't. And so I want to make sure we've got something in bold that they actually sit up and listen to these And things. I don't get the feeling that you're the kind of person who gives up easily. No. <laughs> Quite right too. Victims Commissioner, Baroness Helen Newell. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much Thank you for your very, time very much. this morning.